Yeah. What's up, everyone, and welcome to the 42nd episode of the Control Freak Podcast. I am your host, Alex Blackard, or at Les Alex on Twitch and Twitter. Make sure to go follow me over there. Today, we have on a returning guest, Sean Mogelgaard, and a brand new guest, Cameron Neighbors. What's up, guys? Hey, hey, how's you doing? It's going pretty good. Sean, of course, you were on a couple episodes ago talking about your awesome top four run at SCG Indy. And Cameron, that same tournament, you top... Uh, you got 11th, I guess. Yeah. I was going to say top 16, but I want to do you, you know, do you justice. Yeah. You got, <laughs> a, you got 11th. Break. So you yep. got 11th with inverter, blue, black inverter. Um, mm-hmm. So today's episode is going to be a little bit different than normal. Uh, obviously, usually we're talking to uh, new guests, talking about their history and just giving tips on generalized uh, control concepts. In this episode, we're going to be breaking down um, inverter versus blue-white control. Um, and as always, the, today's sponsor is Solitary Pro and, of course, the lovely patrons over at patreon.com slash lessalex. You can find all that information in the show notes below. And if you ever are on tcgplayer.com, use my affiliate link in the description below and help out the show. But yeah, today we're talking blue white versus inverter and yeah, it's going to be fun, but first things first, obviously my listeners and viewers know I record this on Sunday, which is probably the worst day to record a podcast based around Magic the Gathering because bans happen on Monday. So we are going to be talking about uh everyone's most, you know, everybody's excited to hear about the bannings in uh Brawl, you know, we're, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to be talking about the Brawl Bands, uh, Rip Golos. But no, we're going to be talking about Modern, and we're going to be talking about Pioneer. So, of course, Modern played, Pioneer Band. What's that? Have you ever even played Brawl on paper? I've, uh, no. <laughs> no. No, no, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Never. So we're going to be talking about those bands. We're going to be talking about Blue White versus Inverter. That's going to be the real meat and potatoes of the episode. And then we're going to finish it off talking about kind of the fallout of coronavirus uh, just with all of the GPs and SCGs being canceled. And, yeah, so let's let's get into it. First off, let's talk modern bands. Um, Once Upon a Time, Got the Axe. Uh, what, do you, what do you guys think? What do you guys think? Oh, I'm, so I'm really happy. Can I play <laughs> okay. Amulet? But I'm actually really happy. Oh, wow. So that's yeah. interesting. Coming from an Amulet player, you're, you're happy about it. I am. I wish they would have banned Dryad just because I hate how the way the deck plays now. But banning once is a good step. It's, yeah. it's... Can I help? Oh, go ahead. No, go for it, Sean. <laughs> I'm, I just think, like, overall, it just... I don't know. That, that card isn't really, like, a magic card. I don't know why they printed it. I feel like it's just more, you know... It's more important for, like, the health of the format overall. Yeah. I think it helps a lot. Like, it just... I don't know. It just stops all these like random things and it stops these insane consistency, you know, like yeah. can't, can't, I remember um, Cameron at a tournament that we played at played like a Death Shadow deck and he would just keep hands with Once Upon a Time and No Land. Oh just my to, God. <laughs> he, he, he's going to hit it, you know, it's just like, it was just wild. It's easy clap. No, <laughs> no sure. Yeah. So that's something to yeah. notice, to, to note too. Both of you guys are from the same uh, town. In fact, you guys play at the same LGS yes. and everything. You guys are some stone cold killers. I don't know <laughs> what's in the water out there, but you guys are just <laughs> killing it. You know, to both uh, top sixteen that same tournament. And then you said your buddy also top aided the the classic as well at at Indy. Yeah. Um, and yeah. Um, so yeah, so you think overall? I agree. I think it's a good ban. Like, of course, mm-hmm. I play blue white control in almost every format, so I would have loved to see. Uh, Veil of Summer band, but we're not Actually, living. Yeah. We're not living that life. Um, <laughs> Man, at regionals, I like someone. Someone veiled me in response to just the charm, and it, it just hurt so bad. <laughs> it just hurt. I'm like discard two, and he's like, nah. nah. I'll just draw a card. You, you oh, discard okay. one, and I, you discard fine. one. <laughs> yeah, I was like, okay, that's fine. I'm fine. We're fine. Oh man. Um, so yeah, what what do we think is gonna does does this hurt the titan deck enough do you think uh cameron i think so i think it'll still be a player in modern i just don't think it's the de facto best deck anymore i think for the last like six months maybe it was 
if you knew how to play Amulet and you weren't playing Amulet, you're probably doing something wrong. Mm -hmm. But I I think it'll hurt it just enough that it'll still be a player, but not over the top anymore. Makes sense. What What are your thoughts on it, uh, Sean? Um, yeah, I, I pretty much agree. Like, I think it opens things up a lot. I'm actually pretty happy with what I think modern might turn into. Right. Um, yeah. well, you know, I, it's just, I think, um, I think just like what Cameron said, it's kind of like an open field. You know, I don't, I don't think there are any, like I, in, to me outside of Vale of Summer, obviously, but I'm biased yeah. when I, when, when yeah. I, when I see the part, I'm biased, obviously. Right. But I mean, outside of that card, I don't. I don't see any like insanely egregious cards in modern right now, you know, like sure they've upped the power level, but like there's nothing absolutely insanely bonkers. Right. I was like, like maybe Urza, but like, you know, yeah. there's no like or anything like that running around. So I think it's kind of freed up a little bit. We'll see. I could just be completely wrong, but it, it, it definitely seems like it, to your point about Urza, they are doing everything in their power to keep that card legal in this format. So <laughs> they're banning everything around, like Mox Opal, boom, gone. You know, uh, Oko, yeah. boom, gone. Like, get out of here. It's I don't think like, it's going anywhere. Like, yeah, and, and you know, I think it's just like I just gotta, we gotta accept it as part of life. But I mean, to that same point, you know, people thought thought the same thought the same thing about like Twin when Twin was legal. You know, just thinking like, oh, we just gotta accept it as part of it. And then they just surprise Nuke Twin. So maybe one day we'll uh, be freed from our <laughs> oppressed shackles of Urza. But yeah. Until um, then, I relatively modern is in a good spot. Yeah, and and the fact that that Bant control deck is popping up now, mm -hmm. it plays Veil of Summer, which it is what it yeah. is. But Euro, now back in my day, whenever you cast Divination. You just get to draw two cards. Like yeah. nowadays, you get to gain three life, and you get the opportunity to recast it with a six six. Like it's nuts. You're yeah. you're really strong. The card yeah. has a lot of modes. Yeah, D divination <laughs> it, it, has come a long <laughs> way. <laughs> so. You know, and it's like I mean, like even Croax is still like making impact in Jund, but yeah. like nothing, nothing like nothing like Uro. Like Uro is just. You know, I, I like how they made the two the two titans. Like, you know, Kroxa does, you know, they discard and then they take some damage, right? Yeah. And like, you know, Uro's like, oh, it's like the same thing. You know, you just draw a card and like put a land into play. Those are those are similar effects, right, guys? You know? Yeah, wink, wink, nudge, <laughs> nudge. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, green's not broken. It's fine. We're fine. <laughs> it's all good, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so so do any of you guys have anything else to say about the modern bands? I think, by and large, it's, it's a good band, and it was kind of like yeah. the band. If you had to, if you canvassed and you know asked modern players what's the card that needs to go i think a lot of people would have said once upon a time i agree i, I agree and i also think like it was the correct thing you know it didn't absolutely kill any decks that i could think of off the top of my head yeah and it also like left modern in a pretty good spot you know like cameron said amy was still viable you know other strategies that were utilizing once upon a time are still viable they're just exactly. like not as consistent and broken yeah. So, Cameron, do you think that the deck will go back, or do you think it'll go back to the more original amulet version, or do you think because of uh, Elysian Dryad, it's just it is a Valakut, quote unquote Valakut style deck now? I think it's going to remain a Valakut deck. Uh, Azusa is obviously busted, but yeah. the turns where you just go Valakut Dryad and just continue to play the game are at a different level. So I think you have to continue playing that card. Should place the onces with like some ancient stirrings or something like that. Yeah, it's not back. the exact same, but it does the trick. Absolutely. Um. Yeah. I mean. Okay. Cool. That that's yeah. good. That's good insight because I don't ever play amulet. <laughs> like that yeah. is nothing that I would ever want to sleeve up. So, it's good yeah. to get. I'm I'm glad that I'm getting the other side of things. You know. <laughs> so. So moving on to pioneer, uh, mm -hmm. bannings or lack thereof, <laughs> uh, yeah, there was no bannings. And I said on this podcast with John, me and John both said, Inverter of Truths is going to be banned, and it uh, we were wrong, you know? Yeah. Uh, I'll take that. I'll take that, yeah. So, Cameron, <laughs> you you uh, obviously play Inverter. I'm sure you're ecstatic. Um, oh, yeah, for you, sure. What do you guys think? Do you think this was the correct call? Or I know because a lot of people were just dumbfounded by the fact that nothing was hit. 
I think it's the correct decision. I think there's still going to be that period of like, what do people play? How do you beat it? Because the deck is still obviously very good. But just yeah. like the mono white deck that Zan's been working on, she's playing like two main deck Gideon's Intervention. That's obviously insane against Inverter and has utility outside of that matchup. So there are ways you can beat it. And I think it just takes putting time into it to figuring it out. Yeah. yeah. You know, and I, I don't, I think, um, I think Cam's right. Like, I don't think that my gut feeling was to just kind of like nuke it because I kind of, I saw that Inverter was kind of like this busted broken combo deck, which it is. Right. But at the same time, you know, it, it bears a lot of resemblance to Twin and Twin was like instrumental in shaping modern as a format. Yeah. Like, I don't think that. I think it's definitely the best deck, but I think it's definitely beatable. We just have to like figure it out, you know. And, and I'm like, like Cameron was saying, people have figured it out. Yeah. And it's like, you know, card there are cards like Gideon and Gideon, <laughs> Gideon, mention, you know, that are very good at combating the deck as well as like, you know, uh, I know that uh, John has started main decking like mystical disputes. You know, yeah. we're playing blue eyed decks are now playing like void shatters and stuff to like get around their mystical disputes. Yeah. and things like that and i think that that's definitely a step in like having more favorable interactions against the deck and honestly that w when i was w when i played the deck at indie that's kind of a lot of what i felt like i needed against like the main the main deck at least you know was just like i just felt like i needed like a few more favorable interactions a few more like better better ways to interact that you know were more efficient right um because yeah. you know blue white's as, as much as I love it, sometimes um, control has a tendency to be a bit clunky. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, especially if you have, like, an awkward sequence of draws or something like that, um, you, your hand that was once good could end up ha being, like, a real clunker and you have to do some, like, awkward things to get out of it. But I think, like, minimizing those and kind of, like, streamlining your options is, is really beneficial. Because now, like, on turn three, you can still – cast omen if you had to play a tap land on two because you know mana bases are perfect but you know let's say tap land on two on three like play untap land you can still flash an omen and dispute something right um yeah or, or you know things like that i think just those steps have given us points against the deck and i think have made it i, I don't want to say we're favored but i, I definitely think at least game one but I think like it's definitely steps in the right direction. And on top of that, we still have like Gideons and stuff like that, which are still just powerhouses. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um. My general thought was initially like, how? <laughs> like, how is this thing not getting banned? Yeah. Um. As I'm sure a lot of people's were. Um. Yeah. What do you guys think about their? Um. So they they gave out some statistics, um, mm -hmm. th which is very ironic because uh, this company loves to hide. Uh, data from everyone i think it's funny that they bring data to the table um yeah. i'm not saying that they're lying but it's awfully awfully strange that they're going to use this whole 49 percent against the rest of the meta as as a defense um and that's only moto results right like they didn't yeah yeah so I, it's just incredible to me that you know, we watched Indy was a great example of this. I mean, how many decks were in the top 32 or top 16 rather that, that were inverter? I mean, it was a, like 40% at least, right? Yeah, like, there were a lot. Somebody fact check me, but like, like, I mean, it was a lot. So <sighs> Moto is, is different than paper magic because you can just go use your, excuse me, use your card hoarder account find a deck, you know, go one, four in a league and be like, all right, I'm done with this. And then like never, but like how many people were doing that and giving this deck such a bad, uh, win person. Like that's, that's what I'm thinking of. Like, I don't know. Yeah, what, yeah. what do you guys think that's, about that? That's something I wanted to touch on actually. Yeah, the 49% for could be accurate, but I think everyone was kind of like, they knew that something from inverter was getting hit. So there wasn't really a need to play test it anymore for like the big name pros, all the grinders and all that playing it sure. in that iteration, like didn't actually matter. So I think that could be swayed by the actual pilots of the deck. Yeah. yeah. It's, I will say after playing against it, you know, the skill of the pilot definitely changed how the games were played. Oh, like, sure. it, you know, there are a lot of lines in that deck and, and I think like, 
it, it, it can really punish you if you take bad calls, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, and like the Splinter Twin comment, the deck does have a Splinter Twin, tw- Splinter Twin kill con, but unlike Splinter Twin, if you disrupt this combo, the inverter player dies. So it's much more high risk for them. Yes, that absolutely. Sense. Yeah. And, you know, I kind of feel like in Pioneer, right, it's kind of felt like a not quite modern light because the decks are really powerful. But, like, you know, I think the 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 higher risk that you have with Inverter kind of, I don't want to say, like, makes it, like, the equivalent of Splinter Twin. But, like, it, it makes it makes more sense to me because I'm like, okay, you know, they're, they're allowing this two-card combo, but the risks are a lot higher than, like, the Sahili cat combo, right? Right. Because, like, let's say someone takes out all your, you know, cats or something, like, or your, all your Sahilis, then you're still left with cats, efficient ways to draw cards, and good planeswalkers, like Teferi and stuff in your deck. And, yeah. Oh, no, right? How can I win with that? <laughs> but, like, you know, if, if you interact properly with an inverter player or, you know, are able to interact with their combo efficiently and keep them from winning the game they lose like hard lose yeah so like actually lose <laughs> like, like yeah. the game's over you won the you know yeah, it's, it's, yeah. so i think the high risk mm-hmm. um may also have been a factor that they considered right like that's true that's if, something if, i hadn't considered either so that's a good point yeah. well, i i mean like you know I, I didn't really consider that that much either until cam said it and then i'm like well that makes a lot of sense yeah no yeah, definitely I mean, there's definitely going to be the game is where the inverted player just goes thoughts sees you thought sees you turn four inverter turn five oracle yeah that's going to happen sometimes but i mean like, there's a lot of decks that'll kill you on turn four anyway right yeah so. and, and i still feel like that still reminds me of just like games where it's just like you know, when you're playing as twin where it's like serum vision to remand your spell you know flash my dude untap my lands like spell pierce or spell snare your spell and then untap kill you you know it's just like it, it you know it's just so yeah. similar but it, it, like I said, like there's a lot of, you know, the, I think the inverter deck if, uh, interacts a lot better. Like having the proactive interaction of like thought season, and like, yeah. um, uh, what's thought erasure? Even though they're moving away from that towards more like, you know, sensor or mystical disputes. Um, yeah, I still think that's, you know, the the way they're interacting is a lot different. But I, I think that. Um, I think that they, they can still be punished for that. Like the mono red decks were starting to capitalize on inverter, like with all the life loss and stuff from like, you know, shocking thoughts using you. And then that's like free four. And then they can just apply a lot of pressure. I know inverter actually going into the weekend of indie had a lot of problem with some aggressive decks. And yeah. And there was a um, lot of mono black aggro at in indie. Like, yeah. So that makes sense. Mono- yeah, because Mono Black had, like, you know, Thoughts Ease You, Threat Threat, Thoughts Ease You, yep. and just, like, interacting really well with Inverter while also applying Recursive Pressure, which is good against, their, like, Fatal Pushes. Like, I can see, like, the chinks in the armor, but I think the deck's still, like, really good. Oh, for sure. Especially in, like, a good pilot's hand. I mean, and we saw that, obviously, but, yeah. Yeah, Pete Ingram taking, taking it down a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I think overall it was fine. I think it is fine. Um they did also touch on the fact that um, Breach didn't get banned, and that was something, too, that I I was, like, pretty sure they weren't going to do anything just because a couple reasons. They, they cited this in the article, actually. They said, you know, it Damping Sphere is a card that is has every single deck in the format has access to. You can play that on, too, and it really just makes them cry. But also, it was kind of something that I just kind of picked up on in my theory even if that deck was the best deck in the format, you, all three of us know, listeners probably know as well, not everyone is going to pick that deck up and play it just because of the play pattern. Yep. You have to be either, you know, just the grindiest of grinders and just, you know, have to get the grind out those uh, SCG points or just love the storm style strategies to want to pick that deck up. Your average, you know, uh, SCG goer, like somebody who, oh, there's an SCG in town. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick this deck up and, you know, crush it with it. They're not going to have a good time with that. <laughs> so, yeah, for sure. But um, do you guys agree that that was the right call to not ban the uh, Breach deck? I think it's fine based on power level in terms of how fun it is to play against. I can, <laughs> It's probably not very fun because the deck doesn't yeah. really play magic. Right. It just kind of tries to kill you. So, in, in terms of competitive world, I, I think it's fine. I mean, leaving it's fine. 
Yeah, I, I agree with like in competitive world, it's fine. Like like you said, you know, damping series a card, you know, on top of that, rest in peace interacts with all yeah. of it. But also to your other point, even if it was the best deck, I know I would never yeah. ever in a million years ever play anything like that. You know, I just love how it found way too much to ever <laughs> not play. You know, and I feel like there it's a blessing and a curse, man. <laughs> exactly. You know, and it's it's I I, I think that. <laughs> I think the deck's for the most part fine, and you know if it became a real problem, I think it's like very high on the Wizard Watch list. Yeah. So if something got printed where it became a problem, I think they'd react pretty quickly. You know, like I think by them not banning anything, it's kind of showing like, hey, you know, we we see it, we know yeah. it could be a problem, right. but when there's efficient interaction in the format right now that anyone can play that's really good against it. You know, and like all the other reasons that you're saying, but. Yeah. You know, I think that saying like, "Hey, you know, we see it. Like, we see the problem that we see something that could be the problem, right?" And 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 we, you know, are able to uh, take action against it if need be. So, yeah. I'm not super worried about it. Um, and I know that uh, I know that if if my hand is forced and it becomes the best deck, I can play cards like Damping Sphere. I'm already right. playing Rest, right? <laughs> And we have like counter magic and so on and so forth. Even if they have like mind twist or whatever, yeah, or whatever. It is. <laughs> Remember one of my thought, um, thought to start that card is dirty. Yeah, I was playing with one of my friends, um, like at the event we just sat down after a round was over, because I had time between rounds, which was wild. Thank you, Dream Trawler. But uh, <laughs> shout out Dream Trawler. <laughs> yeah, shout out Dream Trawler. But he, he just like. I, I had nothing, and he was making like I had like sensor or something. He was like, making a million mana. I'm like, okay, you know, I'm losing this game. Sure. And he's like, and he's like, yeah, I'm gonna go tutor up whatever the thing was, and, like just wreck your hand. I'm like, oh, okay, you know, this is the worst time I've ever <laughs> so, had in my entire life yeah. playing. You're like, so now we're actually dead. Okay. Cool. Yeah. I was like, okay, I knew I was dead, <laughs> but now it's over. Right. <laughs> so. Yeah, I, I think the deck's fine. I I think in the fact that they acknowledged it in the article says to you know to your point. Uh, Sean, that it is on watch. If anything gets crazy, if it gets to be seventy percent win rate or whatever it was at the PT or whatever, it was crazy. Or was it a Mythic Championship? Whatever it was, I think it was PT yeah. Arizona mm -hmm. or something. Phoenix. It's like it was like seven. It was like sixty nine win percentage or something. So yeah, it was absurd. And you know, I guess you also have to think of like how many pros played it too. How many yeah, people yeah. saw like you know of broken course. deck, of course. You know, and and. You know, people were just like, "Oh, why well, play like the not broken deck when I can just play the broken deck?" So right. maybe that can influence it too. So absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Okay, um, so yeah, those are the bands, um, at least the bands that are important to this podcast and its yeah. listeners. Um, so yeah, now we're gonna really dig into blue white control versus blue black inverter, Cameron. You took you know you took the inverter deck to eleventh place at Indy. And of course, uh, Sean, you top forward with blue white control. So currently, with the current setups of both lists, let's just start off the rip. Who has the advantage in your guys' opinions? I will start, Cameron. Pitch your case for. <laughs> so, in so game one, I think that blue white is probably favored if you're not playing main deck like Narset. And just Look at that big old smile on yeah, Sean's I face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it also depends if you're playing Mystical Dispute main deck, how many of those. Yeah. And there's also just like a wrong half of your deck to draw. So if you draw the Fatal Push half, of course, you're going to be less favored. But in an average game, I think that Blue White's more just like, they're okay. They can just disrupt you as they need to be. Play a Gideon. If it goes unanswered, they're going to win the game. Yeah. After board, I think that changes a lot. Okay. But yeah. Sean, what's your opinion of the game one? Um,. I think I th I felt like at at I felt blue white at at uh, indie game one was bad, but I think now game one's a lot better, so especially with a lot of what changed? The changes. Um, okay, so yeah, the go, inverter decks are playing it, more yeah. counter spells and like are interacting right a lot more in ways that blue white likes because I hate being thoughts used, Absolutely. but you know I, I I like playing around counter magic, right? I'm used to that. Mm -hmm. Right. Anyone who's played Control Mirror is always like, okay, yeah. you know, keep track of like what they have, what they could have, just play around it. 
you know, and, and since they're leaning more towards like sensors, mystical speeds, things like that. Okay, cool. You know, now we're playing mystical speed in the main deck to interact with them. You know, we're still playing sensor. You, I, I've seen lists start shifting to, I know John's shifted to this as well, void shatter, which yeah. is just to protect us from their mystical disputes. So even if they like wait to keep up mystical dispute to protect their Jace on five or something like that, you can still efficiently interact. And even if you have, um, I mean, yeah, yeah you, cause you can interact with void shatter. And then if you have mystical dispute on top of that, you can still dispute it and only pay one and hold up mana to pay for their dispute. Mm. So like, I think the level of beneficial interactions has gone up. Um, like I was saying earlier, you know, I think it feels a lot less clunky. I know John's also experimenting with some things right now. Like one of the most recent lists he's pl- uh, posted has things like Elspeth that conquers death in it. Also, yeah, like, I saw that. You mean it's a fairy, you know, things like that that I think just put us a little bit higher, at least game one. But, you know, before it definitely did not feel that way. But I also probably. I'm a little bit biased there because a lot of times I have like hands full of seal aways and supreme verdicts. <laughs> As it turns out, is bad which is the combo deck. Who knew? Yeah, who would have thought? Yeah. yeah, but you know, like Cam was saying, they also have that same downside of like, what if they just draw a hand of fortune? Which is yeah, right. it's not like I play creatures. Sure, they'll like push my one one, but can't push Gideon. You know? Yeah. <laughs> nope. Uh, <laughs> cannot push Gideon. Oh man, could you imagine? Oh wow. That was- um, so yeah, so okay, I mean, yeah, I, I, I agree, you know. Um What are your thoughts? Game one has always felt fine ish, you know. I, I and I honestly don't have enough uh games under the belt. Like I play on moto, I play leagues. If if I come across an inverter deck, obviously, you know, that's great. If not, I just kinda gotta roll with whatever moto dishes out to me. It's not like I'm doing any crazy, you know, I'm sure uh Sean, you probably tested against inverter uh you know 400 times or whatever heading into indie so but i've always thought that the matchup is fine i thought post board it was probably not favored for blue white um now with the new technology coming out that could change obviously um but generally speaking i i hadn't ever felt game one was too crazy right yeah and another thing i want to point out is um there were some lists that were using more recent technology like i know john was talking about in the your podcast with him yeah how like when he was testing less people were playing heroes downfall but Mm -hmm. a lot of the better players who had more updated lists at the event were playing more heroes downfall deck and i did notice that like collins mullins had Two heroes now falls game one, and it made me so sad. Or I think like somebody I played against who was playing Inverter had two heroes now falls game one, <laughs> both my Gideons, and I'm like, oh okay, I just can't win anymore. Yeah, <laughs> you know, just I think you know adapting like that for the Inverter deck because they're gonna find it. They only see a bajillion cards. Oh right? yeah, I mean it's yeah, right. especially against blue white. Like these games are yeah. going these these game ones are not ending quick. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's not like I apply pressure. So yeah, it's um, you know, it. it especially against updated decks it's really hard um i think i think it, like it if if you're playing more heroes downfalls or i think we were even talking about like some people are playing elder spell now which is why oh, yeah, yeah so, we were talking about that <laughs> if if you know they have these kind of cards in their deck game one yeah i think it really puts them far ahead oh, like super definitely far. Yeah, if I yeah. see an Elder Spell game one, I'm going to be like, Judge? Like, come on. <laughs> yeah, that's, <laughs> like, that's a wild one. Yeah. Yeah. Deck uh, check this man deck right check now. him now. <laughs> <laughs> or, like, you know, I've even seen stuff, like, as small as just having Narset in the main deck or, you know, having things yeah. like, um, you know, it's Ashiok, Scarab God, you know, adding these grindy pieces yeah. into your main deck. You know, while you, you can like force all my resources on your dirty combo cards, and then just like jam this giant card that can never beat, and I'm like, okay, you know, and uh, so I think, yeah. I, I think things are definitely evening out. So, quite a- did you have anything to add, uh, camera, before we talk about sideboard and like what we should be doing on both sides? I don't know about game one. Game one just kind of goes how it goes. <laughs> sideboard though, there's a lot. Yeah. So, yeah. so now we're gonna talk about uh, what how to sideboard from both both sides of this fight um you know cameron if you want to start and say what the new technology is for inverter we kind of touched on a little bit but 
if you want to just say what you bring in, what you bring out, and kind of your philosophy yep. on the match in the sideboard games. For sure. So after board, the games typically <laughs> don't go with like turn five combo. It's usually not what you're doing. You're usually playing a long game. Yeah. So I use, I like to cut one or two Thassa's Oracles. And then let's see, I have a list up on my other screen. All my fatal pushes because they're all terrible. Yeah. The Heroes Makes Downfall sense. is great, all that. Uh, recently, people have been playing a lot of uh, Jace Friends Prodigy on their sideboard. So that card's obviously a house against Blue White. Oh, yeah. Uh, nice. Going up to four Mystical Dispute, even though it doesn't hit Void Shatter, it hits basically everything else that's not Gideon. So yeah. that helps too. Yeah. The extra downfalls, Narsets, all that kind of stuff. And then five mana Ashiok is something I wanted to touch on. Ooh, which okay. I think Canister is playing in his main deck. And that card is sick. People were playing it around Indy, but I wasn't quite on it. I didn't think we needed it. Yeah. But now I think you do. The Soul Tide Delirium decks are playing like three on Mortigo or something like that. And it doesn't always kill you, but a lot of the games it will just stop you in your tracks. So having another win calm like that is really important. And it also just helps in this matchup a lot too. Yeah, and like a quick quick point is I remember watching you after one of my rounds was over, you were still playing, um, and you got a more to go and they took it against Sultai Delirium, they took all your Jaces. And I remember like that was like the first time that you were like, Oh no, he picked yeah. not inverter. Like I remember several times throughout yeah. the day, Cam was like, Yeah, they took all my inverters, but I just won with Jace, so it's yeah. fine. And I it's had- just six delirium opponents uh a mortigo inverter and i killed all of them with jace oh my god (laughs) so yeah if you get if you're playing on mortigo don't uh don't hit inverter (laughs) folks (laughs) yeah yeah yeah. and and i think that um you know as people start to people are starting to realize that you just like name jace so i think you know that's a really good point that you do need to have the additional threat now um what do you if you don't mind me Asking what what do you kind of what's kind of like your mindset going in to like the board? How do you feel like you need to play the games out, right? Like what what needs to happen for your success, right? So I think Inverter can play a pretty good long game against Blue White, but you definitely need to have answers up front too. You need to have your thoughts uses. Mm-hmm. You need to have your answers to Gideon's on the play for sure, especially on the draw, because if they resolve it, and you don't have downfall. You're likely just dead anyway. So you have to keep a hand that has the right balance, and those are kind, can be hard to find, but I wouldn't be afraid to mulligan in this matchup for sure because you have cards that matter and cards that don't. And mm-hmm. you need to see your cards that matter to actually win the game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, that's pretty much you know, what, what I'm thinking. I'm not really super scared if they, like, mull super low because you know I know the game's going to go long unless I, like, have turn three Gideon to apply pressure or, like, yeah. turn Gideon or turn four else. Like, something to, like, do to apply pressure. Yeah. Um, if I don't have those pieces, you can recover so quickly, you know, and you mm-hmm. you only have four dig through times, right? <laughs> and, is that all? <laughs> yeah. So it's like being able to recover. I don't think is. I I I know from my perspective, I don't. I only feel really comfortable when they go super low, like to like four or something like that. And I'm like, oh, okay, you know, I think it's really hard to lose from this. They don't have any resources, but like, yeah. He, the game's very winnable from six or five from their side. So I agree with Cam 100%. Like, sure. if you're an inverter player watching this, don't be afraid to mulligan. Don't keep, like, a mediocre seven when you have infinitely better sixes, right? right yeah. Like, um, and, and I know, like, from the blue-white side, it's mindset-wise, you know, before I talk about, like, cutting stuff, mindset-wise, sure. you're – most board, you're probably turning into the aggressor. Like you, you're gonna have to accept that. Like sometimes you just have to jam stuff and hope, and sometimes you can, you, you're just forced into the passive role. But if I like, it, it feels so much better to be making them react to your stuff because right. then you don't really have to worry about, you know, them casting cards that you're scared of. Like they're not resolving Jace Friends Prodigy if you jam a Gideon usually because then they're just trying to spend the turn while you're tapped out to kill the Gideon, yeah. right? But then you're like, oh, surprise, second Gideon, or like, you know, oh, I have to be small Teferi in play now with Dispute back up, right? Like, yeah. y- you have to be more proactive. And and I remember when I first started playing, I was either super scared of being proactive, mm-hmm. and I, like, didn't fully understand when I had to understand my role has shifted to being... Oh, for sure. Pressed. 
I think and, that's that's something we touch on almost every single episode of this podcast is knowing when to, you know, turn turn the corner. Um, so, kind of in that vein, in your opinion, what is that point? Like, how do you know? Like, what does a hand look like against an inverter that you're like, all right, I got a jam, and I gotta I gotta uh, actually try and kill them very white quickly. White source, white source any other land Gideon Gideon so that's just Look, it that's, <laughs> that's really it and then like assume, <laughs> I, assuming I've lost game one just jam it on three like they yeah. sure they're playing some number of sensor but like man maybe they have like two or three like just just jam it if they have it they have it but if yeah. they don't you're just like then you're time walking them and they have to do a whole another thing their next turn of like killing your Gideon and then like I said you're just so far ahead in turn four and then, like, so many times I just jammed it and they never had anything. And they just untapped and, like, well, they, like dig, 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 go. Like, yeah, like, oh, just kind of spin their wheels and try and, and find then, something and never did. Yeah, and then I untap with Gideon. And, like, and, and from there I feel like I can never lose. Right. Then I have, like, yeah. tap Gideon. I boarded into a million counter spells. So mm -hmm. I'm just like, oh, sweet. I'm sitting nice and pretty. And then, or just, like, follow up with, like, an Elspeth or something to apply even more pressure. It's just, mm -hmm. you know, it, giving them a limited number of turns is yeah. important. But at the same and that same vein, you know, I feel like this matchup you have to be pretty flexible. Like yeah. I'm not I'm not about to pass up a hand of like dispute, dispute, right, void satter or sabotage plus lands or like plus like cantrip lands or something like that. Like yeah. I'm not gonna play the hand interacts super efficiently, very well in the early turns. You can still counter an early Jace, right? So a lot of it depends on your opening hands, but of the two, I very much so prefer being aggressive, just because I feel like ending the game is so important in this matchup. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because like just cutting the number of turns that the combo deck has is important. Like a good example is like in modern, right? You know, you boarding cards like click and stuff like that against combo because mm -hmm. you want to interact and apply pressure, and click. A, provides quite a bit of pressure and usually combo decks aren't super concerned about their life so they're like fetching and shocking or pinging right. themselves or you know mana lands so you know in that same vein i think it's important to be so aggressive be aggressive um, be be aggressive yeah <laughs> um and like, yeah. even if they counter your gideon you can still win the game anyway you're still exactly. filled with ways to win okay. yeah exactly because then like if they counter your gideon and you play another planeswalker Right, because you only board to a million, so <laughs> yeah. <right. laughs> so you like you play play another planeswalker, or even if they just like counter your Gideon and untap, like play a dude, like play Jace, you're still not in the worst pot, right? Because right. you have plenty of good counter plays. Like, okay, cool, you play your Jace, I can now play my land and play my Teferi mm -hmm. with this backup, and mm -hmm. you know, even if you don't have the dispute, you know, you can still like just jam your Teferi because like, what well, if they have it, they have it, but if they don't, I get to bounce their Jace draw a card. And then they're replaying their Jace, yeah. and you know, still don't board out on my verdicts. And like, even then, you know, there are plenty of other ways you can kill the Jace, like a big to fairy tuck your Jace or something like that, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. yeah. So, talking about specific cards that you want to bring in and bring out, I know that's something yeah. that a lot of people have, you know, I, I've been getting hit up for John Sideboard Guide <laughs> since the day that you're the what was it episode 39 uh th no episode 40, 40 came out the one that you were on sean originally people have been yeah. hitting me up for his sideboard guide it's like i mean yeah you could you could dm him but sure here it is like yeah. so what uh from the blue white side of things what are yeah. we bringing in what are we taking out obviously um, we know now we want to be aggressive but what mm -hmm. what specific cards are we bringing in and taking right. out so seal away blows <laughs> just sucks. oh my god that card is like the worst thing ever in the matchup yeah if they're attacking with inverter man they're probably it's, already just winning anyways yeah like, it's oh, rough god it's <laughs> like sure you can do the cute thing of a, oh i'll get their jace with my flash gen seal away hoo, 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 right <laughs> but like no 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 get that card out of here it sucks yeah. right just play mystical speed or something um yeah i also trimmed azorius charm it does cycle, but outside of that, every other mode has no text on yeah. in the matchup. So, you know, I'd rather play a relevant card instead of just two mana cycle. And then um, I usually, if I knew they weren't playing pack rats, I cut two verdicts. If I knew they were playing pack rat, I cut one verdict and just cut another Zorius charm. Gotcha. So it usually was like two, two, two or uh, two, three, one. Gotcha. Um, I think. E I think it's also 
to keep in mind with people bringing Ashiok and stuff like that Mm -hmm. and like scare of God, maybe holding on to like a Supreme verdict might not be the end of the world, but I'm probably not, I probably don't have enough reps with the more modern version now to like have a solid answer on that. Um, I, I definitely think that, I think that I'd probably still just cut the verdict. Yeah. Like, if they're if they're getting super far ahead with Scarab God and stuff, you're probably just going to be losing the game anyways because they're just crying to whatever they need. Yeah, you um, probably just want to counter that thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Just just counter and you know move on. Um, I think boarding in, bring in Mystical Dispute, rest in pieces of trap, don't do it. Like yeah, solid. That trap. Is, that's actually yep. something. Uh, you know i'm 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 very glad you brought that up because that is something that i've you know people dm me and that is something don't bring it in oh my god it's no it just like it it turns everything on like yes it turns (laughs) it turns off their dig obviously but like they're a hundred percent winning the game right whenever they go for it they're winning the game no matter what yeah just like, just, just don't do it. Just don't do it, man. Oh my god! Oh, I remember. I remember at first I was like, "Yeah, John, I think it might be okay." And John's like, "No, no, no." no, no. <laughs> He's like, "No, no, no. <laughs> why it's bad?" And I'm like, "Okay, you know, it makes sense." So don't bring that card in; it's a trap. Um, but you know, any like, also another important thing, uh, John said not to bring in Dream Trawler, and I was like, "Oh, you know, but I want to apply pressure." Sure. And, you know, with what, that in mind, because I was preaching on like attack them earlier. Right. But, what What's the reasoning behind not bringing in trawler? Uh, it's six mana, and yeah, just too uh, expensive. They They play like they like Cameron saying they board into four dispute. Yeah, and it's a blue card, so like the odds of them having efficient interaction for it are so high, and it's <laughs> it's a six drop, so like that's six turns of them to like thoughts use it out or something yeah. like that. So. Yeah. You know, sure, it's insane if it survives, but like I think the the risk is so high. Um. Let's see. So I always brought in Dispute Dispute. Um, there was a NAR set in the sideboard, and I think there still is a NAR set in the sideboard yeah. of John's most recent list. Bring that in. It's so good. Oh, my God. Yeah. It slows them down so much. Oh, yeah. It just does everything you want it to do. Shuts it, down like, Jace. Um, like, it's very good. Forces them to, like, just... They, they can't, like, opt sorceries be defined, you know, Hero's Downfall or a threat or something to jam that turn. They have to do on your turn, mm-hmm. which is, like, you know, not the not like the worst drawback for them you know they only have to you know like casting off an instant speed is not really the worst thing ever but i think it's an important thing you know just there's a lot of upsides um let me see what uh like bring in additional pressure like gideon alley of zendikar oh my god that card's insane against them it's another gideon so if you like play gideon on three emblem gideon and then they spend their next turn yeah just down, downfall and then just jam other gideon and make a man <laughs> Yeah. That. Have yeah. You're like, okay, uh, do you have it? Or if you don't, you're taking seven, and that's, you know, that's a clock. Um, yeah. You know, uh, Monastery Mentor was pretty good. Um, not super stellar, but it was still pretty good. A lot of times it was like Thought Seize Bait. They'd see it and get scared and just take it. But like, I mean, like, rightly so. It's the same card. Yeah. Do you agree with that, Cameron? Yeah. Yeah. You, you, you like time. you like snap it, it off sometimes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, kind of have to, right? Like you can't yeah. not. Card's great, right? but I mean, you know, especially if I like, jam it on three because they take out all their pushes, right? So right. if I jam it on three and they don't have like way to kill it, you know, thoughts use it on the answer to it. Mm-hmm. So you know, if you think about it, it's like taking that is pretty good. And then like if I'm able to untap with it, all your counter spells just make more threats. Mm-hmm. So. That's pretty nice. Um, and so that's usually what I brought in is more efficient interaction in the form of Mystical Dispute and very resilient, efficient threats. Yeah. Like getting in and Thorn. And those play really well into, like I was saying earlier, making, forming those aggressive hands of turn three, here's my white threat that you can't dispute if you're on the draw. Yeah. Or if you cast any spell sorcery speed, you can't do it, you know? So that's pretty much what I do post board um and like i said it's important to like be really thoughtful of you know having the mindset of being aggressive right Mm -hmm. um i think i think a lot of blue eye players are either too aggressive or not aggressive enough and i think it's really hard to find a balance yeah yeah for sure like i mean i still struggle with that oh yeah you know i think it's definitely one of the hardest things for a, a control player is Mm-hmm. really knowing to win to uh turn that corner and 
you know, yeah. it, kick it's it into the next gear. It's yeah. completely different every game, and it's different in every matchup. Mm-hmm. And, like, no two games are ever the same, usually. Like, technically it's possible, but, like, yeah. Yeah. So just having – just, just like, being aware of just, like, knowing kind of when, having the gut feeling of, like, this is when I have to do something. Right. right? And I have to, like – you know. And the problem with that is you only get that through experience. There's no cheat yeah. code. There's no video. Right. You know, you can watch LSV, Jam, Blue, White, and Pioneer till you know, your eyes bleed. But mm-hmm. you have to put in the reps or else you will never learn that. Yeah. Um, so. Exactly. And it's just like, man, it's it's – it's hard. A lot of people don't expect it to be as hard as it is, but man, it's hard because like if you do it wrong, you just get punished so hard. Oh yeah. If you're it's a like, lot different when you're the one piloting for sure. Yeah. If yeah. you if you hit the soul read and you're wrong, you're you're mm-hmm. gonna lose. <laughs> exactly. Um, but like sometimes you just got to do it. Like sometimes, like you know, I if you be patient one more turn, maybe that's just like allowing them to have another turn of thoughts easy or something like that. Yeah. And yeah, sure, you can like hold up missile speed if you wait that one more turn. But like, man, if they don't have it, then they're right. dead. Yeah. So just like, just jam it, you know. It's and it's but sometimes you're just like, man, you know, like <laughs> the way they're doing it. I think it's better to wait. And it's just like having. Oh, it's so hard, dude. Goes back to the whole body <laughs> language thing and really it, trying sure. to. The information yeah. game of magic is is super super important. Yeah, and especially uh, in paper, then it also turns into like their body language. And oh yeah, like that yeah. it's like. Like, is this the time? Like, do I? Is this the time to do this? Or, it's just man. Like, like you said, you talk, we talk about every podcast because it's probably one of the most important things to learn playing this deck. Like, mm-hmm. it's it, it's yeah. and it's really important in this matchup. So, yep. sorry, Posturing maybe, with blue white is like one of the most important things because when you don't have something, you have to look like you have something. Yeah. Or like the vice versa, you can yeah. trick them into making a play because you have the counter for it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah, and. Sean, we kind of talked about that too on on your episode. Is like you know, misinformation and and you know, and getting like, them to zig when you're zagging and vice versa. So, like I remember uh, one of my inverted opponents had like a pack rat, and I had verdict in my hand, but I was acting like super frustrated about it. Yeah, just just to like try to get him to commit more cards, and he he like discarded like three cards to it to grow it. Oh wow! Every turn and you got him. Speed. <laughs> and just hit me and like oh my god how am i winning i even played like tap land on four just to like get one more oh man. oh my god like, untap verdict you <laughs> go it was just wild so nice. just you know using that is like so important and knowing what to look for is so important yeah and just like and like the higher level you go and the better players you play against it's so hard well, yeah because like, so they can hard. sniff it out exactly they they can sniff out your bullshit and you know you can kind of sniff yeah. it on for them it's just like ah oh, it's so hard <laughs> absolutely so hard. i love that part of paper magic though it makes it so much more entertaining yeah it really does you know like like, like i know you say that you're you uh, alex you yeah i play a lot, lot of magic yeah. and you know that it, it, like it's super nice to be able to like stay at home you know you're able to stream and sure. do all these cool things like paper, but paper magic holds yeah. a special place. So, you know, yeah. for, for those of the viewer, our listeners and viewers that uh, ha- hadn't listened to the past episode that uh, that Sean was on, he played. Uh, he plays primarily only in paper. So, you know that is uh, very opposite of me. So, yeah. and I feel like yeah. honestly, and we were talking about this last time you were on. I lost a step at the open because I was just making little, uh, you know, like. What what's the uh Arden not Arden Vale, the other the Blue Castle. Uh, I would I, I looked yeah. there was there was a play where I looked at the top three just mm-hmm. on accident, right? Like uh, it was yeah. an accident, but like yeah. Moto does that for me. Like yeah. mm-hmm. it's definitely a dexterity thing. So Yeah. And, and you know, like there is extreme upside of playing Moto, like getting these reps yeah. in, oh, seeing yeah. what people are doing, the new technology and everything, but mm-hmm. there's a lot of like motor things that mm-hmm. like, shuffling. Sure. Even shuffling. Like, yeah, you can shuffle like having to play fast and like shuffling, you know. I uh, I, uh, I play with a lot of sleeves on my cards. Um, so just <laughs> how how many are we talking about here? Uh, I, I yeah. you triple I sleeve. Have... <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> so just like learning how to shuffle that. <laughs> and your cards aren't foil, are they? No, all my cards are Chinese, world? and I'm getting them all altered. <laughs> okay, 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 I can accept yeah, that. So, 
I'm like 20 cards in on getting my deck altered. Nice. But it's still excessive. But it is it is oh. excessive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Sean's thing. Everyone knows he does it. Yeah. Everyone knows I do it. So that's okay. But, I like foils. So. No, man. It, it, I, yeah, I it's real too. bad too. Now that I don't really play paper, it's like, why do I have all these really expensive cards? Like, I should probably just sell them. But oh man, <laughs> I walked by one of your matches um, at, during during the event. I was just like walking around between rounds in day two, and you were playing as like some like red green deck. But like, I walked by and like your whole hand was shiny because I love <laughs> foils, and I can't let myself get a foil because if I get one foil, in my you deck, gotta get, I have all. To get all. Oh my god, deck. yeah, that's how I it have. is, man. Right, so like when I saw your deck, I'm like, oh man, I want it so bad. Yeah. <laughs> it looks so nice. Like man, oh, it was just uh, infinite envy, dude. <laughs> like yeah, like man. the foil, like um, the foil Howard fountains, just oh, like yeah, with like the set symbol on the thing because the foiling is just so nice. Oh, oh, yeah. like the guild symbol is just so cool. Yeah. So yeah, still yeah. undefeated against red green dinos, by the way. Just so anybody. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I watched you, your, your hand was like Aether Gust, Counterspell, Counterspell. Yeah. And there was Chandra oh play, and it's just like, man, I've never seen a more irrelevant Chandra in my entire life. Right. <laughs> he replayed that same Chandra like five times, oh. and it did not matter. <laughs> <laughs> he just like kept putting on top. I remember um, I let my deck out last FNM to some modern player, mm -hmm. and, and I have like a bunch of Aether Gust on my sideboard because, you know, Mono Red and yeah. Amulet have been the two best decks for a while, and Amulet has like. Veil Summer and stuff, blah blah blah. But he was playing his mono red and he kept on aether gusting a um boil to the top and his opponents like always put it on top. But it just like didn't matter because he was like you like snap gust it or then they like fetch put another gust on top of my deck, draw oh my, my gust for turn and gust it. Like <laughs> it was so sick. But sorry, that is No, no, right. yeah. No, I, I love those little uh you know, little stories. Yeah. Um is there anything else you guys could possibly think that the listeners would want to know about the inverter? and blue-white control matchup in Pioneer. Oh. On the concept of mulliganing as a blue-white sure. player, let me speak from experience here. Sure, sure. Uh, your hand sucks mulligan. <laughs> uh, <laughs> let me just tell you. What uh, a crazy concept that is. Know, but usually they board into a slower game plan, so you have some time to recover. Um, also be aware. But not like five land, air... two, yeah. two planeswalker. <laughs> don't, not don't... that slow. Don't keep five land, four drop, five drop. Okay. It's bad. <laughs> uh, yeah. Instead, you know, try and find an even balance, but at the same time, don't get married to your opening hand. Sure. I remember it was um, John actually taught me this lesson of, you know, if you're playing against the deck with a lot of hand disruption, mm -hmm. I just be happy with a lot of lands and try not to keep a land light hand because they're going to interact with you. They're mm -hmm. going to see your hand. They're going to take the best card. So yeah. just like, you know, accept it as a fact of life sure. and move on. And instead, instead of like, you know, being like, okay, just I'm gonna keep this. Hope they don't thought these me. Like, no, they're going to. Just, like, just, that is terrible. Just, <laughs> yeah. just more like, it's not worth it. It's not worth. It. It's not worth losing something big or anything like that. You know. Yeah. <laughs> don't don't let it. Don't don't let uh. Don't let that be the point where you're just like, okay, I should probably stop keeping greedy hands. Let let it be now. You know. Right. 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 So. Yeah. Don't make the mistake next time. Just learn from yeah, the last don't... mistake. Yeah. Yes, correct. You know, but of course, inevitably, I'm going to keep another green. <laughs> With all that <laughs> being know? said, I'm still going to keep a really risky one. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But just not the risky in like that sense. Right. Oh, man, the hand was so bad. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Yeah. So On the other side of that, yeah, from the inverter side, we talked about this a lot, but Gideon of the Trials, his emblem only looks for a Gideon Planeswalker. Mm -hmm. So it's important to realize if they do have Gideon Ally of Zendikar, that they still can't lose. Yeah. So yeah. you have to watch out for that. And the dexterity things, of course, like don't play your ops in our sets on your turn, stuff like that. Sure. And just you have to like make your game plan around knowing those cards exist and when to like best use them. So That's generally, um, what do you prioritize with your hand disruption? Uh, especially like post board is yeah. it like interaction or i know it's obviously like based on your hand yeah. right like but you know what's overall, public enemy number one yeah yeah like what's uh, uh, usually just gideon of course because it says we can't lose or yes. you can't lose but narset's also really high up there mm -hmm. uh, all of our cards just draw us cards and we have to have those cards to win the game dig gets around that of course but to put cards in your guard you have to draw more cards mm -hmm. so yeah. typically narset's really high up there obviously the gideons the counter spells aren't really that bad just because you have dispute to back up your own spells sure. now that's changed with void shatter and everything 
but you just kind of have to know your spot, make a game plan based on your hand. Mm-hmm. There's a bunch of different game plans a Verda can take on, whether it's like turn one thought sees, turn two JVP go, or it's I'm going to try to combo you on turn 10 with my Oracle, the one Oracle left in my deck. So yeah. there's just a lot of different things that can happen just based on your hand. But usually you'll know when you look at your hand whether it can actually function. So if your hand is like Oracle, Inverter, Inverter, Lands, Lands, you know you can't keep that because you're not going to combo on turn five. That's just not going to happen. Yeah. You're going to have an answer. Absolutely. So yeah, I guess interaction is the number one thing yeah. you have to have in that matchup. Okay. Cool. Definitely makes sense. Yeah. Um, outside of like, outside of Gideon, what, what really worries you about the blue eye matchup? Cause like, obviously, you know, Gideon turning off your combo game plan yeah. and like your Jace backup game plan is pretty bad. And you do have more answers to that now with like more grindy cards, like the Scarab and stuff. But like outside of just like the Gideon game plan, right? Yeah. What's, what are like, what are some other pretty big public enemies that you have? Uh, Obviously, five mana to fairy is like almost unbeatable unless you have downfall. Mm-hmm. Uh, three mana to fairy is also huge though because a lot of your hands will function as you want to be the reactor because they're going aggressive. So they jam something on turn four. You want to dispute it, untap, and then play your planeswalker. Mm-hmm. But when they have to fairy, it makes it harder to do that because you can't have your counter up after that. Yeah. So three mana to fairy you're talking about yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Makes sense. Um, so basically. Um, Gideon, jam it yeah. early and often. <laughs> Emblem, yeah. implement ASAP Rocky, like as soon as you can. Um, mm-hmm. And then prioritize hands that have Planeswalkers in it, basically. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's basically oh. the majority of what you're scared of. Yeah. Also, Fable Passage on three to the Blur players out there is not a third land. No. So they cannot <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> so just jam it. Yeah. Like, you know, I, I was talking to John about it. I'm like, oh, are you sure? And he's like, yeah, a lot of them, at least at like at, at any war, aren't playing sensor anymore. Just jam it. Just just jam it. Just jam it. Just jam it. <laughs> you know, if they have it, they have it. You weren't going to beat it anyways. Just jam it. I'm like, okay. okay. Sounds good. And it just worked like 99% of the time. It was so good. Yeah. So, yeah. Cool, cool. Um, well, do you guys have anything else to say about the matchup before we talk about this uh, last little thing we're going to talk about here for a brief minute before we call it a podcast? Or... That's about it. I think we did a pretty good job. I mean, I don't. If anyone has any questions or anything like that, feel free to hit me up on Twitter. Um, all three of us are on Twitter, so feel free to hit us up. Um, but yeah, I think we kind of went over it. Sideboard plans. Who who overall has the the lead in this matchup? Who's favored in your guys' opinions? Because um, we talked about pre-board, but we don't really speak yeah. about overall. Post board, it, it has a lot of factors. Like, what kind of sideboard are they, you know, working with? Things like that. Sean, I know. the people want to know who has. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry, Magic has a lot of variables. No, of course, uh, but uh, if you were to play a hundred times, yeah, who's gonna get that W more more times than not? Man, I feel like I gotta be biased and say blue white, but I'm gonna t- I'm gonna say straight up, it's really close. Yeah. Like, especially yeah. if playing as a good player, ooh, yeah. it can be real. Can, you know, what do you think? I would be biased and say inverter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, that's just how it goes. Yeah. Uh, the real reason I think inverter is favored is because you do have access to four dig through time. Like, I'm pretty sure the last John Farrell list is like playing one or two dig. Mm-hmm. And that card is just obviously insane. It just carries you into the late game so well. Yeah. So I think that card just pushes you over the edge. Yeah. Um, I personally do think that inverter, I mean, I, I thought it was going to ba- get banned, I thought it was correct to ban it um we'll see moving forward i i'm very skeptical just because well there's not going to be any paper tournaments that this uh you know moda data is going to just keep stacking up and try and like basically uh manifest destiny what wizard said right more more new players to the deck are going to pick it up now that it is quote-unquote safe and we'll see how the data pops up but i think you know, paper tournaments are a lot different. There's a lot more that goes into it financially and just like overall investment of time and energy. Uh, so until we get tournaments back, you know, actual factual GPs and, and MCs and, you know, pro tours or whatever they want to call them these days, um, I, I think that Inverter does have the advantage just slightly. Um, and it's been very close. Obviously, the matchup is 
a hell of a lot of fun to play. So if you like very thought-provoking matchups, this is definitely one of the best in Pioneer, in my opinion. Um, But yeah, what's up? No, go for it. I I would say like a brief note, um, and this is also like a little story. Uh, Before the event, Cam and I both finished our deck list, and we're like sitting down talking, and he's like, yeah, let's play a few games, right? Um, And in the hotel room, there was an inverter player in the hotel room that I was in. We played a bunch of games. I beat him like every game but one. I played Cam like five or six games. He beats me every single time. <laughs> it's like it like handily. I have like yeah. double get with interaction. He's like, oh, doesn't matter. And I'm like, oh <laughs> man, am I about to like scrub this event? This is awful. Yeah. So I, you know, it's just like, who it uh the oh yeah it, it, a lot of variables, but like man, it was just the matchup can go both ways, and they're like small oh, little things that people can have or not have in their deck that can make all the difference. Like a second hero's downfall, for instance. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. The really game changing. And I think if they have it puts inverter favor game one, if they don't, I feel like I can't lose. Mm-hmm. Like, Cam, certain, Cam, do you think uh, two, two downfalls is correct now too? Yeah. I think two downfall on the main is correct. I uh, definitely want the third one in the board though. Oh, okay. It's Rocket super three. important. To have. Hell yeah. Yeah. Like, um, cool. third one on the board too. Oh, yeah, right. Every every everybody <laughs> listening to this podcast is just like, now. like, uh, how oh, that's good stuff. Heard. Yeah, and like see, a million that's what I'm saying, man. Now. They are favored, whether you want to admit it or not. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, so moving on, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this, like, kind of deep dive into this uh, this matchup. This is this is a style of podcast that I've gotten away from in the most recent episodes just because we've had on some uh I mean better way to put it is like higher profile uh folks come on doom switch John yourself I mean Sean you you top aided the damn event so good good on you um but yeah now we're going to talk about something that's kind of uncomfortable um I don't want to like get political or anything but I do want to pointed out because it is affecting magic along with the rest of the world um you know the coronavirus obviously is 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 a thing i think Mm -hmm. obviously at this point that is going to affect not only magic players but the rest of the world um i think a lot of people no no, go for it go for it i I think a lot of people agree with you it's important and relevant like around the world i Um, i Definitely think, you know, I, I have this microphone and I have a couple people that listen to the podcast now. So yeah. I, I definitely think it is very important to just not, this is not just the flu, right? It's not. It's not. The flu doesn't crash the stock market and shut down sporting events. Like that has literally never happened in, yeah. in the 20th century um, yeah. or 21st century. Um, yeah. But what are your guys' plans like in terms, because I know you you know, I assume Cameron, you also play a lot of paper magic. Um, yeah, mostly paper for sure. Sean, and Sean and Cameron both. What are you guys' plans on like getting testing in, and what are you guys gonna do to, you know, obviously LGS is this is gonna be rough. This is gonna be really yeah. rough for a lot of local businesses. Yeah, and as someone who works, I'm a front end manager at an LGS, and yeah. I will say it's hard attendance is down across the board all our weekly events are closing in we're talking about stopping our weekly events to you know stop spread of the virus things like that Mm -hmm. um and you know it's it's rough it's hard it's hard for like the business because you know those like the revenue streams are really important you only imagine how hard it is like i have plenty of people who come in you know because we we were like a collectible shop on top of you know magic stuff so they come in to get something and they're like talking about oh i work at like the phone store down the street yeah. No one's come in today, and it's like you know six p.m. Right? They've been up all day. No one's come in, or like oh wow, it's know, like an AT and T or something down the street. Nobody's coming in. Yeah, no, no one's going in, right? Oh, wow. Or like you know, you have people who work at restaurants. No one goes to restaurants. Things like that. Yeah, actually. And, so and, to, not to interrupt, but kind of to interrupt. In Illinois, starting tomorrow. And so I'm, I live in Illinois. I live like ten minutes away from St. Louis or whatever. But um, the governor has put a stop to all bars and restaurants like they're going to basically shut them down and this is the first to my knowledge correct me if i'm wrong um this is the first state that is actually doing that um so you can no longer dine in or go to bars or restaurants they're still going to be able to allow drive through and delivery but Mm -hmm. you cannot go to a sit-in restaurant or bar anymore for the next two weeks 
So that's starting that's starting that's today, Monday. Though. Yeah. Yeah, like I, I think that's that's definitely good. And you know what? I mean, honestly, if like curbside delivery and you know drive throughs are still available, I don't think that'll like kill, you know, some of like the bigger name right. uh, rest stuff. But I know like one of my coworkers, she works two jobs and her other job is working at like a family um sandwich shop. Mm-hmm up in uh, like northern georgia and she and th- they have no idea what they're gonna do like they're talking about adding like a roadside thing to what they cannot offer or something like that but you know yeah. they're most dine in these small stores might have some problems oh, with that but to what political things um yeah. talking about magic specifically and like testing and you know future paper events and things like that I'm... um i i think it's important to stop the spread of the virus but I, I know that I really want to still keep testing and playing and things like that. Sure. Um, even if there aren't big events to go to, you know, we all play this game because we love this game. Absolutely. I've picked up playing formats I normally wouldn't play. I play Popper, like Commander, you know, as, <laughs> yeah. you know, as much as these formats are looked down upon, it's important to still like play and have fun with your friends. And Absolutely. I think in a more casual setting, it's important to keep the game alive, right? Yeah. Like, sure, I won't be able to play in like an IQ or a PPTQ or anything like that for a little bit. Mm-hmm. You know, the next two, the next two um, opens are canceled. The next four GPs are canceled. Yep. I know my friend. He's a uh, my actually uh, the other manager at my LGS that I work at. He's a Pokemon pro. Shout out Connor. There you um, go. Shout out Connor. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but he, he he's like a Pokemon pro. Like he's up there. You know, yeah. like. He he's really good. I think last year he was like top twenty in the world. He's nice. like really good, and he landed in Vancouver for uh, like a regional, the equivalent of the GP. Sure, right. He went to the aquarium, and then his phone blew up because after he landed in Vancouver, the Friday before an event, the event got canceled. Oh wow! And then every That's... Pokemon event <laughs> got canceled. That's so, crazy. You know and. It's it's you know things like that. We're gonna I think we're gonna start seeing, and even like wizards might start saying, "Hey, you know, stop doing weekly events." Yeah, which I've made. Right? And they're and, actually uh, with the pre-release for I- Ikoria, mm-hmm. they're allowing people to buy their pre-release kits and then go home and play. So yeah. I mean, this is some uncharted waters for Wizards of the Coast as a company. Even I mean, obviously, yeah. a lot of companies this is uncharted waters. I mean, look yeah. at the NBA, and, like, but mm-hmm. anyway, yeah. it, it's, I think it's an important thing because, you know, as much as I love this game, it's not worth the health of the world and my friends and things like that, right? Absolutely. Like, exactly. To be cautious, you know, but, you know, at the same time, I still do love this game, right? I, I yeah. want to, you know, and I, and I, especially me, I love paper magic. I love playing with friends. Well, if you ever so. want to play arena and just get on discord, I'm down, dude. Yeah. <laughs> that goes out like, to either two of you so <laughs> like, you know i um like i'm saying you know it's important for everyone to do their part and don't be dumb don't yeah. enable this virus and yeah. as much as it may suck you know cam and i we we might just you know be playing modern against each other for a little bit yeah right mm, yeah <laughs> not many tournaments to go to but yeah like exactly that's probably for the best you know i yeah so uh you know, playing in small groups is smart, making sure everyone's, because in a small group, you know, just like make sure everyone's sanitary, wash their hands, things like yeah. that. Yeah, exactly. Did, did you guys yeah. see that basketball player, Rudy Gobert? Uh, like, you guys haven't seen this? I'm judging by mm-hmm. your reaction. Okay, no, I'm not. so <laughs> he, after the end of an interview, right, after the game, he, uh, mm-hmm. like, basically touched the mics up and all the, like, recording equipment on the, on the uh, you know, table and then before he went back, you know, because he was done with his press conference, mm-hmm. that night it got revealed that he had coronavirus. Jeez. And he just did that. Like, he just, like, you know, and I'm sure you can hear that. Um, yeah. But he did yeah. all that to all the equipment on all the recording equipment. Everybody's, like, it was reporter cell phones and, like, stuff like that. And he just, like, you know. That's wild. And he and had and, and he has he had coronavirus and he passed it on to Donovan Mitchell, who is a teammate of his, and wow. that's basically what started the whole, you know, snowball effect of okay, mm-hmm. NBA is going to shut down. Okay, well now MLB is going to suspend their play, and you know yeah. this and that. And now WWE is even out there, 
I watched Think SmackDown. Like WrestleMania, yeah. Yeah, I watched SmackDown. They had it at the Performance Center with no fans. It was the most bizarre thing I've ever seen. They're like performing and you know doing their like you know showboating and stuff to no fans in the. In the it crowd. was a good show though. It was good. It was a very yeah. That's another <laughs> WWE oh. uh, low key. If you watch my streams, you know my uh, my uh, like whenever somebody subscribes or whatever. It's mm-hmm. like Stone Cold Steve Austin going like, hell yeah, yeah. like, <laughs> and that's the bottom line. Yeah, so, um, but no, um, to get back on the track, I think it's very important. Uh, this is not a joke, you know, it's, it's should be taken very seriously. Um, since that happened, Rudy Gobert has, like, uh, posted a thing on his Instagram, like, I'm very sorry, and, and, you know, did the whole apology tour thing, but, like, it's just, don't be dumb. Just don't be yeah. dumb. Just don't be dumb. Like, oh, don't I think, think yeah. and don't try and come up in somebody's like face and like you know intention. Like, don't don't come up in somebody's face and intentionally cough on them because you're probably gonna get just punched in the face and it's not gonna <laughs> yeah. be great. Yeah. I would um, talk. <laughs> yeah so just don't be dumb. Man, Have respect. Don't buy all the toilet paper on the planet. Like, be a g- decent human being. Like, that's crazy. Have you guys Man, heard about that? Just, yeah, no, I work at Target. All oh. of the aisles are completely cleared. Oh it's my insane. god! Insane. Yeah, yeah. And, no, uh, you know, as um, two two things. One, sure. We were talking, you're talking about wrestling earlier, and yeah. I like a different kind of wrestling. I like like collegiate wrestling and stuff like that. Okay. But even for them, they had to make it to where the I think the NCAA's for wrestling, no fans were allowed to go unless you were like family of the wrestler. Mm. And wow. even then, I think they ended up like canceling the NCAAs. Yeah, and they, they tore, like the people became eligible for next year, but like mm-hmm. it, it's it's like it's affecting everything. Oh yeah, it's and, it's, yeah. and it and it's not. And I, I mean, I've been doing research and stuff, and just kind of watching videos and whatnot. I don't think it's going to be over in two weeks either. I think this could <laughs> could could be an all summer thing. So. The hope yeah. not, but I mean, I obviously, I, I, yeah. I hope not, but it's I, yeah, I'm not going out there hoping that you know it's right. going to be off. But like, like you're saying, it's important to be aware and be like, it's real. Like, yep. this just is, do your part. Wash your hands. Yep. Just wash your hands, please. <laughs> it's so simple. We had, we, we had like an IQ uh, last weekend. Yeah, and I'm like, just wash your hands. Like I literally. <laughs> Because, you know, I had to do, like, you know, the Storm Manager thing. Like, oh, oh, hey, thanks for coming to yeah, the yeah. condition game, blah, 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 right? Shout out my condition games. Yeah, um, there you go. <laughs> but but uh, literally, I I was in my, in my speech. I'm like, guys, be hygienic. Mm-hmm. Wash your hands between each rounds, okay? When you turn in your match slip, I'll remind you. We have hand sanitizer up at the counter. Like, like please, just, like, be smart. Just yeah. it, takes like 30 seconds to a minute to just not yeah make a mistake you know no no yeah. shaking hands either like you know do the the like the fist bumps the the fist bump. I, yeah which you know, I, I, can we talk I, I, about I, shaking hands I, in general i think that that's just kind of like a, a, a well, thing that's old and out of date anyways yeah yeah like be like a, say good game or you know exchange pleasantries but you don't mm-hmm. even if there is no epidemic on the horizon you don't have to shake hands like that is yeah. so old school. It's like kind of yeah. silly to me. Yeah. My uh, I had a math teacher in sixth grade, and uh, Mr. McLaurin, I would call him Mr. Mac. Literally, <laughs> li- he he was hard on like give me bow right. He would just be like uh, elbow, yeah. like I'm not shaking hand. I'm not fist bumping. I will only give you an elbow. That's it. Yeah. It's just like we call him. We called him tubies. I don't know why, but. Tubi, and you're just like, yeah, I don't know why. That's what they were called. Well, that's what we called them in high school. Um, cool. I mean, that's pretty much all I've got for this week's episode, you guys. Um, I appreciate both of you coming on. Uh, Thanks talking, for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Um, talking bannings, talking blue-white versus inverter again. Um, and, and then the coronavirus thing is, is something that I think we just as a – uh, people need to take a little bit more seriously it's fun to share memes and i've shared my fair share um but at the end of the day just wash your hands and be a decent human being <laughs> yeah. um but yeah everybody um thanks for watching or listening to the 42nd holy smokes 42nd episode of the control freak podcast um cameron how can people find you on the internet 
if they want to reach out I to you. I am on talk. Twitter at Cameron Neighbor. If you want to, you can friend me on Facebook. I pretty much add anyone. That's basically it. Just send me up. Right on. And then, Sean, how can folks find you? Uh, same as Cameron. I'm on Twitter and I'm on Facebook. Uh, you know, just hit me up, shoot me messages. I love responding. I love questions, you know, and right on. That's pretty much it. Open book, basically. Cool. Um, yeah. Again, uh, thanks to the sponsor of the podcast, Team Solitary Pro. All their information, of course, will be in the description below. And if you enjoy the content and uh, the podcast, you get value out of it and you want to say, hey, how can I support this podcast? Head on over to patreon.com slash less Alex. We are very close to eclipsing the very next uh, goal over there and go check it out for all the information. Of course, all that will be in the show notes as well. And the Control Freak, um, I got stickers and stuff like that. So if you become a patron, you do get some cool swag. And then if you really enjoy, and you're on TCG Player anyway, you know, you're going to be shopping online a little bit. Use that affiliate link in the description and help out the podcast as well. But yeah, everybody, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Make sure if you did watch this on YouTube to smash that like and subscribe button and keep spreading that Azorius propaganda and be kind to one another, Magic players. Have a great night. Uh...